Raiders. What's up, Raider Nation? This is Wi-Fi Willie of the Raiders Rundown. We got a lot to talk about today. We first have to talk about this new coaching staff that we have and the new defensive line coach, which solidifies the staff. We'll look at some players that we recently signed, LeBlanc in particular, and we're also going to take a look at some of these Chiefs players who got into some trouble with Alvin Kamara in Vegas and why the media doesn't often talk about some of the bad behavior by Chiefs players. For, for instance, we always focus on what the Raiders do uh, outside of football. Why don't we focus on these Chiefs players and some of, some of the trouble that they get into? But anyways, Frank Ocom, hired as the defensive line coach. Really interesting to see the Raiders pursue Panthers coaching staff on the defensive side of the ball. You saw us pick up Jason Simmons as a secondary coach, and he's a young guy who only has a few years in the NFL. And then you got Frank Ocom here, two years of NFL experience, both with the Panthers in 2020. He was the assistant D-line coach and now uh, the defensive line coach this past year. Now he's our defensive line coach, has some history with Rice and Baylor and was a former player. He was drafted by the Texans in the fifth round when he was a D-lineman and then kind of was a journeyman around the NFL before eventually getting into coaching. And hopefully this guy could, you know, do really well. He has some big shoes to fill. You know, we had Brinson Buckner, Prior to getting Rod Marinelli, those are two really talented defensive line coaches. And now we got Franco Com. And it's interesting to see us on the offensive line and the defensive line kind of going with younger coaches. We have uh, Brasillo as the offensive line coach, and he's only been there for a few years with the New England Patriots as an NFL offensive line coach. That contrasts with Tom Cable, who's been offensive line coach for decades, it seems like. And then you had that same thing happening with the D-line. Rod Marinelli, been a D-line coach for decades. And then now we're going with Franco Com, who only has a few years of NFL experience. But I trust Josh McDaniels. I trust Ziggler. I trust the process. And hopefully these moves end up paying out really, really well for us. And it is cool to get this kind of younger talent. Maybe these guys can stay for a long time with this coaching staff since they still have a lot of years of experience to accumulate. So I, I, I like this move overall. We'll see what happens. We'll see how it really depends on how Max Crosby you know, likes this guy. How does Unique Ngakwe like this guy? What's his relationship going to be like with the players? As a former player himself recently, I, th I think it's going to turn out really well. I, I think players often really, really appreciate that when they know someone has, has they themselves done the same job, right? You're more likely to listen to that person. So I think that one's going to pay out really nicely. Cravon Le LeBlanc. I originally was not going to talk about this because I thought, all right, it's just an insignificant free agent signing, you know, he, we, yeah, we picked him up. It's probably going to be for a veteran minimum. And I didn't think it was a big deal until I started really looking at the numbers. And then I see, man, this guy is not really a cornerback. He, he Cravon LeBanc, cornerback, age 27, uh, experienced five years in the NFL, was part of the Patriots practice squad last year, but didn't see the field, had some time in Philadelphia the past three years. And um, before that was in Chicago. And I started looking at his snap count, and I had this over here, slot. This guy, when he has played, and by the way, he, he hasn't played that much. You know, he, he's been a backup type of player most of his career. But when he does play, he's playing in the slot a significant amount, much more than outside cornerback. So it made me think, in Patrick Graham's system, will they like somebody like LeBlanc? Does he fit the scheme a little bit better in the slot? What does this mean for Nate Hobbs? Well, Nate Hobbs not be a slot corner in Patrick Graham's system. Maybe Nate Hobbs goes to the outside and we have LeBlanc in the slot. Who knows? But definitely they are bringing him in here with the intention to play in the slot. And you also look at his snap counts too. He has a, a decent amount in the box. He actually has more snaps in the box than he does at cornerback. So Patrick Graham's system, you saw it last year with Logan Ryan, who had some time in the slot as a safety Slot, safety, box, so maybe that's what they're looking at with LeBlanc. Going to function more as a safety who plays in the slot than an actual cornerback, which which to me was interesting. Made, made it seem interesting. This is a guy who's been, you know, he didn't play last year, right? And now we're giving him an opportunity, and it seems like we have a perfect role for him. I got this freaking dangling hair right here. I had to fix that. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? What, you know what? What the cap? You know, what the crap? What the cap, right? What's going on with the cap space? Uh, $20.5 million free agency is about 24 days away. Yes, I am counting it down. I am counting. I count down how long it's taken Derek Carr to say anything publicly about the Raiders. And then I count down, uh, you know, when, when, when's free agency and when's the draft. So it's heating up. And, and to be honest, I don't really like to talk about the draft until we talk about free agency. Until we, we know, okay, 
we filled these holes here. We filled these holes there. So, for instance, last year. Last year at defensive tackle, we signed Solomon Thomas, Quentin Jefferson, Darius Phylon, uh, even McCoy came by, the, the veteran all-pro uh, pro bowler. We signed all these guys at defensive tackles to one-year deals that had some guaranteed money. And so you instantly knew, okay, we're not going to draft a defensive tackle high. In, in the draft and that that's the way it shakes out and that's why rather than predicting a lot of draft stuff I do th- I do kind of want to wait until free agency there are some uh, people I am looking at and I'm interested in but if we go out there and we pay somebody big money at defensive tackle maybe we pick up a Calais Campbell because he has a relationship with Unique and uh that that would be really interesting and that would be cool but it would also indicate that we're probably not going to take a D tackle in the first round right just like last year. So we'll see how it shakes out and what we do in free agency. We have $20.5 million. I believe Corey Littleton and Carl Nassib will be cut uh, post-June, though. Post-June is when you have to cut them because if you cut them before June, you lose money. You lose a bunch of dead money. But if you cut them after June, you free up $14 million. The only problem with that is I wonder how difficult it's going to be for us to sign somebody in March uh, with the cap space taken into account on March 16th the official top 51 uh, players are counted towards the cap March 15th. So maybe it might be difficult for us to cut or for us to sign players since we can't cut Littleton and Nassib until after June. But once we do, once we do, we'll have $34.6 million to play with. And maybe, maybe, yeah, a lot of free agents will be taken after June already, but you could still make a trade. You can make a trade after June, uh, get a really big time player that a, that a team is trying to get rid of, maybe a Devonte or Allen Robinson on a franchise tag. But I highly doubt that. I, I will say, I do not think we are going to pick up Devonte Adams. I just don't think the math is there. And I think Green Bay is going to keep him. And Green Bay is doing everything in their power, according to Adam Schefter, to keep Aaron Rodgers. And once they do that, they're going to franchise Devonte Adams. And Devonte is going to be happy because he likes playing with Aaron Rodgers. So. I believe that's going to happen. we got to look at some other free agents at wide receiver if that's where we want to go or look to the draft. I don't want us to pull all of our all of our eggs in this basket of, oh, we're going to get this number one receiver and we're going to pay him a lot of money. Josh McDaniel's system, I don't necessarily think we need to do that. But $34.6 million, that's a hefty chunk of change. Look, think about it. Carr's contract is not counting towards that. Even if he extends his contract, it doesn't kick in until the 2023 season and 2024 He's going to play on that $19 million in 2022, but he's going to have his extension for the following year. So he won't count against that even when we sign a new contract. So that's a lot of money to play with. Hopefully we spend big and get some really talented players. Not some troublemakers, though, like Chiefs players tend to be. They tend to always cause some problems, and the media ignores it. Frank Clark... People talk about his bad season. Why don't you talk about the, you know, the trouble he gets into very often? We always talk about the trouble Raiders players get into, even Netway and stuff. Why don't we focus on Chiefs players? Frank Clark ha- uh, gets into some trouble, and then you got Chris Lamons here getting into some trouble with Alvin Kamara. We know Alvin Kamara was involved in an assault on a man in Las Vegas at the Pro Bowl during that Pro Bowl weekend. They jumped this guy. Basically, this guy. Uh, was getting into the same uh, elevator as Alvin Kamara and Chris Lamons and some other people. And Alvin Kamara tried to push him back, telling him not to get in the elevator. And that guy, rightfully so, knocked his hand away and said, don't touch me. And then they all came in and jumped him like real tough men. They jumped they jumped him, that guy, like four on one. So, you know what? They're facing legal consequences for it like they should. It's it's not okay for that to happen. There's surveillance. There's video footage of it. So it's going to be very hard to fight this in court, I will say, when we got video of you committing the crime. And when you commit the crime, you got to do the time, right? And so Chris Lamons might do some time. He, he was turned himself in. His lawyer suggested that, was with Alvin Kamara and assaulted and jumped that man who I mentioned earlier. And he is charged with a felony count of battery and a misdemeanor with com- conspiracy to commit a crime. So Chris Lamons probably not going to. And you know what? He probably will play with the Chiefs because the Chiefs really don't care. They signed Netway to their practice squad after we had released him, Damon Arnett. So they really don't care about this behavior stuff, and and they always have problems with their players. Look at Tyreek Hill, Frank Clark, like I mentioned, like I mentioned, uh, Josh Gordon. Even though I don't think substances is too big of a deal, especially the type he was doing. If I, from my understanding, it was just marijuana, uh, so I wouldn't put him in that category. But you know, I I just think there should be more you know media uh, highlighting this. And when you think about it, not only these players, uh, Britt Reed, Andy Reed's son. 
I know he he also killed somebody uh, in a car accident while driving drunk. But before that, he had done done attempted murder, attempt uh, uh, aggravated assault. He had, he had had a criminal record for a very long time, and it just seems like it's swept under the rug by the media. <clears throat> the media is talking about Andy Reid's son, who has since released for that drunk driving accident this past year. But really, why was he ever a part of the coaching staff anyways? This guy has an intense criminal record. Really, if any Raiders player had that same record, they wouldn't be allowed on the team. There'd be too much media scrutiny. So I just I, I just hope the media just kind of, you know, plays fair, right? And, and if you're going to criticize one team because you got some players getting in trouble, criticize this other team, criticize the coaching staff. Say, oh, Andy Reid, what is he teaching these guys? You know, he can't get keep this squad together. He can't keep them out of trouble. Is there something wrong with him? You, you, you want to throw that same shade at the Raiders? Throw that same shade at the Chiefs. But unfortunately, uh, the NFL media never gets real about these certain situations. And then you have this whole thing where, I mean, like, I would rather the media focus on all the the crime elements and the bad behavior of these Chiefs players than focus on Patrick Mahomes' girlfriend and his brother on TikTok. See, that's the freaking distraction. We're going to talk about TikTok, Jackson Mahomes and Mahomes' is. Uh, fiance and how they're annoying or whatever, blah, 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 they're a distraction. No, the real distraction is Britt Reed, Andy Reed's son, being a freaking criminal, Chris Simmons doing all these problems, right? And look, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with committing crimes. You can commit a crime and do the time and redeem yourself. But I'm just saying, the media's throwing shade at us, the Raiders. They're not going to throw it back at the Chiefs. And, and I'm going to make a video about this. And, and, and I haven't been able to talk about this lately, and I'm going to hint to this. It really pisses me off, really pisses me off, that Andy Reid was invited to the Madden Memorial and not John Gruden. To me, like, I understand John Gruden's canceled, but what freaking connect? Like, Andy Reid, is, it, you're literally letting the Chiefs head coach come into Oakland. And I'm, I'm glad he got booed. But, I mean, it's just a shame. Can you invite one Raiders head coach for the guy who is a legendary Raiders coach. Can we have somebody from the Raiders show up there? I don't know. Maybe the Madden family uh, doesn't like the Raiders anymore either. Who knows? But I do feel like they are trying to erase Madden's uh, history with the Raiders. That that has happened a lot. Either way, we're going to keep you guys up to date on everything going down, these new hires, these new coaches, and any of the latest news. Check out some of my other videos. We have a lot of good content there. This has been Wi-Fi Willie of the Raiders Rundown. Peace out and have a good one.